After we checked out the aggregate demand curve, now let's look at aggregate supply curve, which shows the relationship between the quantity of output supplied and the overall price level. Okay. And uh, you know we already um, discussed that the AD curve, aggregate demand curve, snopes downward, just like our regular demand curve, right? But we said that um, it snopes downward because of uh, totally different reasons, okay? Not just like the regular demand cur curve on the individual market, okay? So here, basically, um, there are actually two questions in front of us. First, does AC, uh, I'm sorry, does AS, the aggregate supply curve, snopes, down, uh, snopes upward, okay? Um, now, the second question is, if the answer to the first question is positive, um, the AS snopes upward because of what? Okay. Now, here, let's recall, um, you know, the reason for a regular supply curve on the individual market snopes upward, okay, which should be discussed in our intro and intermediate micro uh, courses. Okay. Now here, very briefly, let's talk about it. Um, suppose that this is a market for marijuana. Let's see. Okay. And then we find that, you know, the initial price is P1 and quantity is Q1. Okay. The point A would be the initial equilibrium. Then we find, uh, for some reason, there's an increase in the price of marijuana. Okay, so um, on this market, we're moving from A to C. That means, um, you know, the production of marijuana becomes more profitable. So uh, producers want to produce more, okay? And um, that's why the quantity supplied increased from Q1 to Q2, okay? Now here, if we dig deeper, and think about this, you have to, um, you, you know, you, you will find that um, this is really about the reallocation of productive resources. In other words, when we find a production of marijuana becomes more uh, profitable, and uh, when we say, you know, producers want to produce more, they got to do something to be able to produce more, right? So there are two possibilities. Number one, the existing marijuana farmers or producers, they probably invest more, okay? Purchasing more machinery, equipment, tools, hire more uh, work, uh, farmers, right? They put more resources into marijuana business. These resources could be used in other industries or sectors. Right, but now they would like to invest more in marijuana industry because of the higher profitability. Right, the second possible um, situation would be some other uh, producers um, in in different market. For example, um, a bike manufacturer. Okay, uh, they used to produce a lot of bikes. Now they find that you know the marijuana. Um, production is more appealing, more profitable. So they would, you know, stop uh, producing bikes. And now, you know, they uh, put their productive resources into the production of marijuana. Okay, so we have new producers coming to this market. All right. So here, basically, we're saying that, you know, because of the higher profitability, there's a shift of productive resources into this market or this industry, right? And that eventually uh, leads to an upward sloping supply curve, okay? It's also called law of supply, right? The higher the price, the more um, would be produced on the market. All right, now let's look at the aggregate supply curve. We actually have two aggregate supply curve. One is for the short run, one is for the long run. 
Let's check out the short one in the first place. Okay. Now the short one supply curve, if it slopes upward, what we're gonna find is when there's a increase in overall price level, then the quantity of output produced would increase on the graph from y1 to y2. Okay. Now um, if this is true, is that because of the increase in profitability? Or is there a shift of productive resources? Let's look at this. Remember here, the vertical axis for AS graph is the overall price level. Okay, So when the overall price level goes up, how would that affect an individual market or industry? Again, we still use marijuana as an example. Okay, When the price of marijuana goes up, you find that it's more profitable to produce marijuana, right? But don't forget here on the right-hand uh, figure, this is the overall price level. In other words, the producers um, on the on a different market, like the bike manufacturing market, they also find that bike price increases proportionally, right? Because this is an overall price increase. So well, we could assume that, you know, the prices of all goods and services uh, in our economy would increase proportionally, including both marijuana price and bike price. Okay? If the bike price is higher, then they become equally, it's still, you know, um, the, the profitability stays the same between the two sectors. Right? So there's no reason for the bike manufacturers to quit producing bikes and, and uh, switch their productive uh, resources into the marijuana industry. Okay? Because it's equally profitable. Okay? Or it's the same as before. All right? So here we have the same challenge we had when we look at the aggregate demand curve. Right here, even we would like to believe the uh, aggregate su supply curve in the short run slopes upward. We cannot use, uh, you know, this profitability or the shift of productive resources to explain that. Okay. Now, how are we going to justify the upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve? There are multiple ways. Okay. Here, we're going to use an intuitive way. Um, it's called the sticky price model, okay, or sticky price theory, to make sense of the upward sloping short run um, aggregate supply curve. Okay? Um, this, is, um, this sticky price model, um, intuitively, it's quite straightforward. It's similar to what we discussed before. Uh, when we look at the, the uh, if you remember the in inflation inertia, okay, when I give you the Paul Krugman's um, article talking about how inflation inertia or self perpetuating inflation takes place, okay, and um, we over there we mentioned uh, one example, okay, uh, saying that, um, you know, let's say the the um, labor union and the employers signed the contract at the beginning of the year. Let's say in January. Okay, the contract, um, um, you know, decides like uh, how much the workers or the members of the labor union would get paid throughout the year. Okay, suppose they have this negotiation um, every year. Okay, um, however. In March, there's an out of expectation increase in overall price. Okay, for some reason, the inflation is higher than expected. Okay, this you know should be quite uh, it happens quite often, right? Um, so there's a 
you know, the proportional increase in uh, the prices of all goods and services. In other words, um, we should not expect that, you know, someone else will quit producing other things and now switch to uh, your industry, right? However, the interesting thing is between March and December or the end of this year, you would still find the profitability of your industry goes up because, you know, the price of the final product, let's say the marijuana price, goes up, but the wage rate stays the same. Remember, the wage was already determined in the contract back in January, okay? So the labor union, even they might regret, but they cannot, um, you know, like force the employer to sign a, a different contract, okay? Um, they have to wait till the end of the year when they sit down for the renegotiation, okay, for, you know, next year. In other words, between March and December, there's a short period um, you would find that production of marijuana becomes more profitable. Okay? So, come back here. What we're talking about is a sticky price means the sticky input price. Okay? You would find that the output price could be relatively easier to adjust okay so when they find that you know everything else has been more expensive or raw materials are been more expensive then they can you know these producers can easily adjust the price of the final product okay like marijuana like bikes like iPhone 12 right however for the input price it's more difficult for the producers to adjust, especially adjust very often. As we said, the wage rate is determined once a year, right? Think about um, the inputs, okay? For example, you would use a lot of fertilizers, you would use a, a great amount of steel to produce bikes. Then um, when you sign the contract with your um, suppliers, Okay, the input suppliers. The contract oftentimes is good for a year or even longer, right? So, you know, the price is already set in stone. You cannot go back and change that. Your, um, you know, the input suppliers cannot do that, okay? Until, you know, this contract expires, all right? So, when we find that, you know, the input price is are stickier than the final product prices, then it creates a short period of time when the profitability um, increases. Okay, so of course, uh, when it becomes more profitable, um, producers would like to produce more. Okay, and that explains this upward sloping uh, short run at aggregate supply curve. Okay. In other words, in the short run, a higher price leads to a higher uh, quantity of output produced. Okay. Now here, I guess we can also come back and explain what we mean by short run versus long run. Okay. So here, short run means you can say at least some uh, input or the input prices are sticky. Okay. Long run uh, means, you know, all input prices and the final product prices are flexible. Okay, they're not sticky anymore. They can, you know, again, in the long run, we're talking about three years, five years, or even 10, 20 years, every price can be adjusted. Okay, there's a lot of time for them to make adjustment. Okay, so here, when we look at the short run, uh, we believe it's upward sloping. Okay, because of this uh, sticky price uh, theory. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the long run aggregate supply curve. And then we're going to put AD and short run and long run AS together on the same graph. 
in the spring, the business cycle.